Welcome back. For this fourth question, a particle of mass m is attached to a light inextensible string of length a and moves in a vertical circle about point O, but then passes through two points A and B. Information about these two points are such that at the point A, the tangential speed of the particle is u and at the point b the tangential speed is half of u we our work here is to calculate the value of the tension in the string when the particle is at a given that the string becomes slack at the point b we also have the angle between the line oa and the line will be given as 90 degrees and the line OA makes an angle of theta with a downward vertical. So let, let's go and take a look at how to go about this particular problem. First of all, first of all, I want us to consider the energy change between the points A in the point B. So the particle moves from the point A to the point B. Let's start with kinetic energy change. So the change in kinetic energy that takes place between the point A and the point B is negative 3 over 8 mu squared. Remember the speed at A is u, but the speed at B is less. So if the particle moves from A to B, the reducing speed then its change in kinetic energy will be negative, but it is, it is losing kinetic energy as it moves with having a speed of u to now having a speed of half of that. Now the next thing I want us to look at is the change in gravitational potential energy, again, between the point A and all the way up to the point. Now let's consider a horizontal line from O coming out this way. Now this horizontal line is such that the angle that it makes with the line OA be 90 minus theta. Because if this is a horizontal line and this dotted line through o is vertical, the angle between this new horizontal and this vertical should be 90 degrees. And if down here is theta, what we have here should be 90 minus theta. And that makes this angle theta. Now let's consider also a vertical from B downward this way. Remember this angle here is 90 minus theta. And so this has to be theta. That being said, since the radius of a circular path, which is OA or OB is given as A, sine of this angle give us opposite, which is the, the length of this line by hypotenuse. So this vertical line will have a length A times sine of the angle theta. So for the vertical through A, we need a cosine of this angle to get that in terms of A. So that will be, so in total, the vertical displacement from the point A all the way up to the point B is going to be A sine theta plus a cosine theta. And that will mean our change in gravitational potential energy between the two points is going to be, remember in moving from the point A, which is a lower point, to a point B, which is a higher point vertically, the change in gravitational potential energy is going to be positive because our particle is gaining gravitational potential energy as it moves to the point A all the way up to the point. Now that we have these two statements, and since there's no external force acting in the direction of motion, remember the tension in this string is acting towards the center of the circle. And it's not acting in the direction of motion in moving from the point A to the point B. 
So in actual fact, that tension is not doing any work. And that would mean that it is ideal to write. And the implications are these. Great. Now with this equation that we have, of course, we can divide it by M and make U the subject and obtain the following. Now let's just name this equation and hold on with it for now. We have one equation that relates U, A, and J. We know that the, the string becomes slack when the particle reaches the point B. The, the implications of these would be that the string becoming slack just means there's no tension in the string or the value of the tension in the string at that point is zero. So let's see how we can use that information to work this out. Now let, let's get back to our diagram to, to see how to relate the forces at A and B to the value of the speeds at those respective points and see how that will help us. Consider the weight of the particle at the point A, which acts vertically downwards, of course, this way. Now this weight is a vector with direction that is pointing down, like I said. Now this vector can be resolved into two components. A component that is parallel to the radial direction from the center of the circle and a component perpendicular to that. So these two components, one parallel to the radial direction from the center of the circle through O and then passes through the point A and another one perpendicular to it, these two would sum up vectorially to the total weight of the particle, which is mg. Remember this line is a vertical line, the weight acting vertically downwards. And if this OA is a transversal to both lines, the angle up here has to be theta. And that will make this component that we look for to be... Now let's talk about what happens at B. At B as well, the weight of the particle is supposed to act vertically downwards. There's a component of that weight that is acting radially toward the center of the circle. Another component acting perpendicular to that. Now these two components again sum up to a total weight. Here's the case we need just the component that is acting radially toward the center of the circle. Because for a body moving in a circular path, the forces that are acting on the particle that are directed toward the center of the circle, these forces uh, are referred to as the centripetal forces. They provide a centripetal force required to keep the body in that circular path. So now let's go ahead and find out what the value of the component of the weight acting to the center of the circle at the point B. B. Again, this line is a vertical line. Since this particular line is parallel to this, it's more like a transversal to both this vertical line and that vertical line. And that should make the angle theta here to be equal to this angle. You can extend this down and see what I'm actually referring to. That this angle and this angle should be equal in measure. And this angle and that are vertically opposite angles. They are equal. This and that are corresponding angles. Again, they are equal. Now, sine of this angle give us a relation between the radial component of the weight and the component, the total weight, which is acting vertically downwards. So that would mean that we have this acting toward the center of the circle. So let's see how that equation at B helps us. So the tension at B, which is acting toward the center of the circle, and the component of the weight of the particle, which is also acting toward the center of the circle, these two forces together give us the centripetal force, which is m times the square of the linear speed divided by the radius of the circular path, which is a. Let's polish this up and see how we can proceed from here. Remember, the strain becomes slack at the point B, and that will mean that the tension B, or the tension at the point B, is zero. From here, we can rewrite this equation as 
we have another equation that relates u squared and a j and theta so let's solve these two equations simultaneously Great, so now we have tan of theta to be equal to 2. Now let's see if we can put some geometry and then figure out what cos theta should be and what sine theta should also be. Now if tan of theta equals 2, that would mean we have offset over adjacent this way. And using Pythagoras theorem, the length of this line should be square root of 2 squared, which is 4, plus 1 squared, which is 5, and that will give us square root of 5 here. So sine theta is offset over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So from these two equations, we figured out what the value of theta should be. You can actually calculate that from here by taking tan inverse of 2 or sine inverse of whatever these two statements are. However, we are getting very close to the final results, except that we are yet to actually calculate the tension, the strength A. To finish this up, let's go back to our diagram and, and resolve forces at A towards the center of the circle to see what happens. At A, the tension in the string is acting towards the center of the circle, but the component of the weight of the particle is acting radially away from the center of the circle. Because to get this vector acting downward, you need to have a vector going out this way and another coming down this way to sum up to this. And the implication will be, so that the net force acting to the center of the circle will be Ta minus mg cos theta equals mu squared over A. Making T the subject we have, remember u squared we wrote earlier as, so let's simplify this first before we substitute that into the expression involving TA. Good, now u squared is giving us 8 over root of 5 times AG. Substituting that back into the TA expression gives... Now let's simplify this finally. 